Nintendo has made two very significant moves. The last time I talked about their hardware coming, the Switch 2, I remember we were a little bit reserved on if it was going to have backward compatibility or not. Now, we actually are very aware as to exactly how this hardware is going to treat old Nintendo software. Look at the way Nintendo even addresses this software. This is what PlayStation, you know, my fellow PlayStation fi fans and the hyper PlayStation fans don't want to get through their thick skulls. This is Furukawa. At today's corporate management policy briefing, we announced that Nintendo Switch software will also be playable on the successor to Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch Online will be available on the successor to Nintendo Switch as well. Further information about the successor to Nintendo Switch, including its compatibility with Nintendo Switch, will be announced at a later date. Many people might look and say, well, this is not surprising. I mean, look at this. Somebody said, well, uh, you know, as we all expected, right? Surprise to absolutely nobody, but a welcome announcement. It is a welcome announcement. And I already, in my opinion, anyways, kind of, sort of, you know, suspected that this was going to be the sensible way to go. Nintendo is about to come in here and be slapping PlayStation again. Did I not tell y'all that PlayStation needed to go back to the PlayStation 4? Do y'all know how many consoles Nintendo Switch has sold right now? They've sold over 140 million units of the Nintendo Switch. And they're going to keep that Nintendo Switch vibing as long as the successor to the Nintendo Switch is still growing. They're not going to let go of it. PlayStation abandoned that particular hardware. And some people in the comment section were saying, well, they needed to abandon the hardware. What a mess. PlayStation put itself in hawking hardware, forgetting that the most important thing is software. So what do I think Nintendo's chess move here is? It's very simple. When you make a game across the Nintendo Switch and a Nintendo Switch successor, I strongly believe that they're going to try to create a system where both game, bo your software must be compatible with, it, with both of them, which means they're going to keep their development cost similar to what they've been making with other games, they're going to make similar games to what they've already been used to making, and they're going to continue their ecosystem to remain unique, provide a selling point that is not available elsewhere. And anybody who wants to come into their ecosystem will have to pretty much compete on that level. In fact, if you look very closely here, I think Jeff Cayley, Jeff Cayley was the one who went ahead and posted this. They already have announced specific games that are going to be coming to the Switch. Some are third-party games, some are their games. And I thought this was very interesting because they're all just, you know, similar to the theme of games that you find on the Nintendo Switch. To me, this is very, very powerful. I remember that I was saying this stuff here just a few days ago. Remember, guys, hey, ladies and gentlemen, please, come on. Let's, you know, at least point out and say, all right, all right, all right, VG, I see what you're playing at. I don't need any accolades. I don't need any flowers from anyone. Why? Because this is just common business sense and business knowledge. What you want to do when you're watching these companies, because they're all in competition with one another, because they're all basically chasing down each other, what you want to do is you want to ensure that you're following to see how they're actually moving in this industry. Just take time to follow and see, oh, this is what these cats are doing. I made the video here. Look at it right here. I made it, I think, when, when was this? On this, uh, three days ago. Title of the video, PlayStation need not abandon the PS4. 25 comments. We can read some of them if you guys want, and I'm sure when you probably take a look at them, you're more than likely going to see some of the same things that I did see as well. It's interesting. And I'm in a position where I just think, you know, why they would abandon such a a software, uh, sorry, a hardware piece that is integral to their ecosystem. They launched games on that thing just recently. They launched Ragnarok. Unicorn Tomboy says, I disagree. No, they don't. It has to end support at some point. It seems like they already have, as they seemingly don't make any more first-party titles for PS4 and have not since got over Ragnarok, which was the last one. Do you think they should still support the PS4 when the PS6 eventually becomes a thing? When, uh, you know, will the support for PS5, when they'll be ending support for PS5 at that end? Well, they can do what they want, but they basically had to lose $10 billion of their valuation when they announced that their PS5, you know, console sales were basically going to be or fall below, you know, the intended metrics. So those PS5 uh, sales projections 
what has it benefited PlayStation at the end of the day? And locking themselves away from PS4, what has it benefited them when the console leader is literally paving the way and showing you how you need to go? I, I mean, this thing is not rocket science, guys. You want to sell software, don't you? Gamers have basically proven to you that what they want are games, good games. Gamers are not interested in your movie-like games every time. Yeah, make them once in a while. It's nice. It gives a good, cool experience, but they're expensive to make. Gamers just want games that they're interested in. And the PlayStation 4, which has basically powered some of PlayStation's highest sellers, somehow is going to receive end-of-life support when Nintendo is like, nah, our Switch, which is way underpowered than a lot of these hardwares that they're about to sunset, is going to continue receiving support. So tell me how Nintendo was not going to continue winning in this regard. Because they've pretty much decided that they're going to stick with their ecosystem. And this ecosystem is pretty much going to be beneficial to them. Talk to me in the comment section. Am I crazy? Is Nintendo crazy for keeping the Switch hardware? Do you want them to basically let go of 150 million possible, you know, sales devices and sales units? Ah, that would be a stupid thing to do. But, you know... Again, my PlayStation fans, <laughs> you guys sometimes, uh, you know, the hyper PlayStation fans, not, you know, some of the PlayStation fans here, you know, you guys are reasonable people, but some of the hyper fans, man, I've seen some of them champion stupidity and I just look and say, wow, that's crazy. Well, get beaten, get beaten into third place or into oblivion, into, in, you know, irrelevance. And then, you know, maybe that will probably wake them up or something. I don't know. See, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much. Put your comments in the comment section. Peace out.